We've got to bring in Rock Kabatko now to break down all of this because, Rock, I don't know about you, but I got this in the elevator at Fenway this morning, and there were some surprises. There were, especially because I kept saying Crable was on the team, so surprise. <laughs> uh, at least I made the assumption. We figured the last bench spot. Probably we knew where that was going. It's going to be somebody already on the 40-man, unless they made a very late waiver claim opt-out. They didn't do that. Bullpen looked like it was down to Logan Gillespie, Mike Bauman. You know, Crable had six straight scoreless and hitless appearances, innings, after that rough start, the first two. So we thought that'd be good enough. Plus, with his track record, he was really good for the first half of last season, was on the club for most of the season until late September. But then you had Bauman. They love how his stuff ticked up after he was moved to that short spurt role. Five straight scoreless outings, the one-inning guy now. And then Gillespie, they really like his stuff, said it ticked up as well. His numbers were really good this spring. It was just kind of one of those things where we're so focused on other people. You kind of look at the stat sheet at the end, us, not the Orioles, and said, hey, this guy's had a really good spring. Is that going to be maybe good enough? Plus, he stuck around that long. It was good enough. And he mentioned he kept waiting for the tap on the shoulder, but right. this was the problem. You had so much talent in the clubhouse this spring training that you had to sort through, had to make some tough decisions, but it's caught a lot of attention nationally. And, of course, the guy who has his finger on the pulse of everybody everywhere, Scott Boris, who actually mentioned this during the winter meetings, Rock, you got to cover this and said they are birds of prey feathered up with an amazing young core, a number of young players that they are stocked with and trying to support this young nucleus. They're ready to compete of course Boris has a couple of clients with the Orioles ultimately they are part of that young core but when you look at it really what makes the difference to make them birds of prey this year yeah do you think Scott just got that off the top of his head or he was ready for somebody to ask him he's that. practicing he writing was it out ready and yeah really you know Rutschman Henderson this rebuild doesn't work no pressure guys but unless they are the players everybody thinks they're going to be and the Orioles certainly think so this rebuild hinges on guys like this and Rutschman by the end of this season is widely regarded as somebody who's going to end up being looked at as the best catcher in baseball. Henderson, so young, so toolsy. No one was worried about the slow start in camp. Had a little wrist soreness. Got through that. DHing today, but he is going to be on that left side of the infield. A lot of third base, a lot of shortstop. The you know tools across the board, and they certainly aren't worried at all about him. He could be. In fact, he's already front runner for rookie of the year. Speaking of no pressure at all, yeah. everybody's looking at that. So really, there's so much hinging on them. But if the team didn't think that they could handle that, that they couldn't carry that weight on their shoulders, that would be a concern. Maybe you'd lessen the pressure a little bit. You know this is a talented young team when no one talks about Kyle Stowers. Normally, He's he would be the guy everybody the yes, everybody would be talking about him in any other year. Now it's like, oh, by the way, because we're looking at those two guys. We're looking at when's cows are coming up and Kerstad and Westberg and everybody else. And there's Kyle Stowers, but it's, there's so much young talent in this team, he almost gets overlooked. Oh, and you mentioned Rutschman, by the way, we should add. He finished fourth for rookie catchers and wins above replacement. But with guys like Mike Piazza, th those are who are ahead of him right now. So some pretty good resumes right. if you're going to stack up some big expectations on his shoulders. But we also saw a luxury this year for the Orioles that they were testing out legitimately eight to nine starting options in camp. And we know that that was a big deal as well. You could argue that they could go for six or seven. But for Mike Elias, it was about that they were going to take a more micro look at the start of the season at least. And here's what he had to say. I think we want to um, put ourselves in the best position to win these first five games and the games that come right after that. You know, we're trying to uh, win every game that we can to, to start the season. And, um, you know, we felt that those, we evaluated that those five pitchers, um, Gibson, Kramer, Irvin, um, Bradish, and uh, Wells, um, give us our best bet. So the best bet there, but again, still many more options. But you, you do like this because ultimately you get to retain some of these guys. And right. I, I know the office has said it a lot. You're not going to get through a whole season with everybody fully healthy. And so this means you've got guys in your stable ready to come back into that rotation. Yeah, there were 12 starter candidates when camp started with just 40-man guys. One name was missing from there, of course, Grayson Rodriguez, which is a lot of disappointment for fans that really wanted him and thought he was going to break camp. We did too because everything Elias said all winter, including yeah. at the Birdland Caravan, was we think it's his time, nothing left to prove at AAA. We won him on there, and then he basically pitched himself off of, of the rotation. You know, ERA over seven, couldn't get past four innings. There was that one inning that would just get him the second time through the order, last three starts, walked a lot of guys. Slider wasn't as sharp as it has been, and it cost him a spot. He will be back quickly, there's no doubt, but that was a little bit of a surprise to us as well. But Tyler Wells finished strong. Kyle Bradish finished strong, and there's enough depth here that they felt like, and they're trying to win right now, too. They don't want to take any chances of getting off to a really slow start. 
and then kind of try to play catch up. So they want to start fast out of the gate. They went with who they thought were their five best starters, which again shows you how much more talent and depth there is on this roster now than there had been in previous years. Well, and of course, the young core is led by somehow an old guy. This is making me <laughs> feel old that Kyle Gibson is the old guy here, but he is the veteran all the same, and he's very proud to do it. Here's what he had to say about being named the opening day starter. I've only done it once in my career, so and I only got one or two outs. So, uh, you know, getting another chance at it, um, I don't think it means you know, hey, ace, anything like that. Like, I don't look into that. You know, I, don't, I think there's maybe 15 aces in the league. There's not 30. So, um, for me, it's just a chance to start a series off. And I think that first game of every series is really important, whether it's the first series of the year or, or even in Texas. I mean, that first guy really kind of sets the tone for how that bullpen is used the next three games, you know, until the next off day especially. And, and um, so I, I think for me it's just trying to go out there and, and um, you know, be a veteran leader and, and try to uh, you know, set the tone for that first series of the year. Oh, you just heard it. He's going to set the tone. What are you expecting from Gibson? I mean, I expect him to eat a lot of innings like Jordan Lyles did, which is one of the big reasons he's here. We didn't know for sure initially that he was going to be the opening day guy when they first signed him to that yeah. $10 million contract. Then it became obvious as we went along. He is the guy with the experience. He's got more of a track record. And they, they love the six-pitch mix, the way he's fit in on this club, the leadership, everything. He was, became the obvious guy. By the way, he pitches pretty well here, too. Four career starts, 1.57 like ERA and an 06 whip. And he likes the cold weather. I mentioned it to him. He goes, I'm from Indiana. Like, bring it. I love this kind of weather. <laughs> he's going to be perfectly primed for it again. Kyle Gibson, your opening day starter for the Orioles.